Hello, I'm Igor and welcome to my tech farm. In this video, I'd like to find out how much artificial intelligence knows about CD printing, the chat GPT. And I collected here 20 questions, which I know some kind of beginner or intermediate user would ask from experience one. And uh, I will rate every answer between zero and two points. Zero if it is completely wrong, uh, two points if it is completely correct, and anything between is one point. Don't forget that ChatGPT works less than half years now and it is always learning and it will not always give the same answers, so I didn't test it uh, so far. To make this video a little bit more interesting, I will use uh, text-to-speech services to read the answers, but this is not the part of the ChatGPT. Okay, let's start with the questions. What is FDNC the printing and how does it work? Fused Deposition Modeling, FDM is a popular type of 3D printing technology. It works by extruding a thermoplastic material, typically in filament form, through a heated nozzle that moves in a predetermined pattern. The molten material is then deposited layer by layer to create a three-dimensional object. The FDM printing process begins with a digital design file that is sliced into thin layers using specialized software. The printer then reads these sliced layers and starts to print the object layer by layer, beginning from the bottom up. The nozzle heats up the thermoplastic material, which is typically made from materials such as plow or abs, until it melts and can be extruded through the nozzle. The nozzle moves in a predetermined pattern and deposits the melted material onto a build platform, where it quickly cools and solidifies into the desired shape. As the printing process continues, each layer adheres to the previous layer, bonding them together to create a solid and durable object. Depending on the complexity and size of the object, the printing process can take anywhere from several minutes to several hours. Once the printing is complete, any support structures used to hold up overhanging parts during printing can be removed, and the finished object is ready to use. First answer is quite good and detailed, so I will give it two points. What materials can be used in FDM 3D printing? FDM 3D printing technology can use a variety of thermoplastic materials that come in filament form. Some of the most common materials used in FDM 3D printing include PLA, polylactic acid, PLAR is a biodegradable and plant-based thermoplastic material that is popular due to its ease of use, low warping, and low odor. ABS, acrylonitrile butadiene styrene. ABS is a strong, impact-resistant material that is commonly used in the production of automotive parts, toys, and electronic housings. PETG, polyethylene terephthalate glycol. PETG is a strong and flexible material that has good resistance to chemicals, making it suitable for applications such as food packaging. Nylon. Nylon is a strong and flexible material that is commonly used in the production of mechanical parts and gears due to its excellent mechanical properties. TPU, thermoplastic polyurethane, TPU is a flexible and rubber-like material that is used in the production of phone cases, shoe soles, and other products that require good shock absorption and flexibility. PVA, polyvinyl alcohol, PVA is a water-soluble material that is used as a support structure for overhanging parts during printing. It can be dissolved in water after printing, leaving behind the final printed object. There are also many other materials available for FDM printing, including polycarbonate, carbon fiber reinforced materials, and metallic filaments. The choice of material depends on the specific requirements of the application, such as strength, flexibility, heat resistance, or color. Really good answer. Maybe I would change the order PLA before the ABS, but definitely two points. What is the advantage of PETG over PLA filament? PETG, polyethylene terephthalate glycol, has several advantages over PLA, polylactic acid, filament, including Strength. PETG is stronger and more impact resistant than PLA. It has a higher tensile strength, making it a better choice for applications that require durability and toughness. Flexibility. PETG is more flexible than PLA, making it less likely to crack or break under stress. This makes it a better choice for applications that require some degree of flexibility, such as phone cases or toys. Chemical resistance. PETG is more resistant to chemicals and solvents than PLA. It can withstand exposure to oils, acids, and alcohols without degrading, making it a good choice for industrial applications. Heat resistance. PETG has a higher glass transition temperature than PLA, meaning it can withstand higher temperatures before softening or deforming. This makes it a better choice for applications that require heat resistance, such as lighting fixtures or electronic enclosures. Transparency. PETG is more transparent than PLA, making it a good choice for applications where transparency is important, such as packaging or displays. Ease of printing. PETG is easy to print and has similar printing characteristics to PLA. 
It has good layer adhesion and is less likely to warp during printing, making it easier to achieve a high quality print. Overall, PETG is a versatile material that offers a range of benefits over PLA, particularly in terms of strength, flexibility, chemical resistance, and heat resistance. Okay, quite a good answer, but I have to correct it a little bit. So PLA is very strong material, and actually its tensile strength is uh, bigger than the PETGs, but only on the room temperature. So that's very important fact. And actually, I learned a few new things. Number three, I didn't know about the chemical resistance of the PETG. And I needed no uh, number five, the transparency of the PTG compared to the PLA. Now the number six, I was asking here for the comparison. Yes, it is easy for printing, but not, this is not the advantage because PLA is easier for free printing compared to the PTG. So one point. How does the layer height affect the quality of the FDM CD print? Layer height is an important factor that can affect the quality of an FDM 3D print. Layer height refers to the thickness of each layer that is deposited during the printing process. The smaller the layer height, the thinner each layer will be, and the more detail and precision can be achieved in the final print. Here are some ways that layer height can affect the quality of an FDM 3D print. Detail and precision. A smaller layer height can result in higher detail and precision in the final print, as the printer is able to produce more accurate shapes and finer details. However, this can also increase the printing time, as more layers will be required to build up the object. Surface finish. A smaller layer height can result in a smoother surface finish on the final print, as each layer is thinner and has less visible ridges between each layer. This can be particularly important for applications where a high quality finish is required. Strength and durability. A smaller layer height can result in a stronger and more durable final print, as each layer is tightly bonded to the layer below it. However, this can also increase the printing time and material usage, as more layers are required to build up the object. Printing time. A smaller layer height can significantly increase the printing time, as more layers will be required to build up the object. This can make larger prints with small layer heights very time-consuming and expensive to produce. Overall, the choice of layer height will depend on the specific requirements of the application. A smaller layer height will generally result in higher detail and precision, a smoother surface finish, and a stronger final print, but will also increase the printing time and material usage. A larger layer height will generally result in faster printing times but may sacrifice some detail and precision, and may result in a rougher surface finish. Actually, a great answer, and uh, it gave me another idea for the video, the number three strength and durability, so it claims that smaller layer height can result a smaller and more durable final print. Well, this is something I have to test. So, definitely, two points. What is the optimal temperature range for printing with ABS filament? The optimal temperature range for printing with ABS, acrylonitrile butadiene styrene, Filament is typically between 230 degrees Celsius and 260 degrees Celsius. ABS has a higher melting point than PLA and requires a higher temperature to melt and extrude properly. The specific temperature within this range that is optimal for printing with ABS may vary depending on factors such as the printer type, the filament brand, and the specific properties of the ABS material being used. It is important to follow the manufacturer's guidelines and experiment with different temperatures to find the best temperature for a particular print. In addition to the extruded temperature, the bed temperature is also important when printing with abs. The optimal bed temperature for abs is typically around 80 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. This is because abs has a tendency to warp as it cools, and a heated bed can help to prevent this by keeping the bottom layers of the print warm and preventing them from cooling too quickly. It is important to note that printing with abs can produce fumes that can be harmful if inhaled. Proper ventilation and a well-ventilated workspace are essential when printing with abs and it is recommended to use a printer with an enclosed chamber to help contain any fumes. Additionally, ABS is more prone to cracking and warping during printing, so it may require a higher level of skill and experience to achieve high-quality prints with this material. Wow, super detailed answer, and it also mentioned the fumes and uh, needed for the closure. Definitely, two points. How does the size of the nozzle affect the speed and quality of an FDMC the print? The size of the nozzle in FDM 3D printing can have a significant impact on both the speed and quality of the final print. Here are some ways that nozzle size can affect 3D printing. Print speed. A larger nozzle can allow for faster printing speeds, as it extrudes more material with each pass. However, this can come at the expense of detail and precision, as a larger nozzle may not be able to create fine details as well as a smaller nozzle. Layer height. The size of the nozzle will affect the optimal layer height for printing. A larger nozzle can generally accommodate a higher layer height, as it can deposit more material with each pass. 
However, this can also result in a rougher surface finish, as the layers may be more visible. Detail and precision. A smaller nozzle can allow for finer details and more precise prints, as it is able to create smaller features and finer lines. However, this can also come at the expense of printing speed, as the printer will need to make more passes to cover the same area. Material usage. A larger nozzle will use more material than a smaller nozzle, as it deposits more material with each pass. This can increase the cost of the print and may also result in more waste material. Clogging. A smaller nozzle may be more prone to clogging, as it has a smaller opening that can become blocked by debris or dried filament. This can result in failed prints and may require more maintenance of the printer. In general, the optimal nozzle size will depend on the specific requirements of the print. A larger nozzle may be better for prints that prioritize speed over detail, while a smaller nozzle may be better for prints that require fine details and precision. It is important to experiment with different nozzle sizes and settings to find the optimal combination for a particular print. So simple question and so detailed answer. Maybe one small detail I could add here that yes, bigger nozzle will allow bigger layer height and bigger flow, but there is sometimes a limitation that if the nozzle and the heater can melt this filament so fast. But anyway, two points. When do I have to use hardened steel CD printing nozzle instead of brass? Hardened steel 3D printing nozzles are typically used when printing with abrasive materials or when printing at high temperatures. The reason for this is that brass nozzles, which are commonly used in 3D printing, are relatively soft and can wear down quickly when exposed to abrasive filaments or high temperatures. This can result in a shorter lifespan for the nozzle and reduced print quality. Here are some situations where a hardened steel nozzle may be necessary. Abrasive materials. Some 3D printing filaments, such as carbon fiber, metal-filled, or glass-filled materials, contain abrasive particles that can wear down the nozzle over time. A hardened steel nozzle is more resistant to abrasion and can last longer when printing with these materials. High temperature printing. When printing at high temperatures, brass nozzles can start to deform and lose their shape. This can result in poor print quality and clogging. Hardened steel nozzles are able to withstand higher temperatures and maintain their shape better than brass nozzles. Continuous printing. If you plan to print continuously for long periods of time, a hardened steel nozzle may be necessary to prevent wear and prolong the nozzle's lifespan. It is important to note that hardened steel nozzles can be more expensive than brass nozzles, and may require higher printing temperatures due to their higher thermal conductivity. Additionally, they may also have a longer heat-up time due to their higher thermal mass. Therefore, it is important to consider the specific requirements of the print and the filament being used before deciding to use a hardened steel nozzle. Quite detailed answer, and uh, about one thing I'm not quite sure. Uh, it says uh, for the higher temperatures. Well, I think that uh, hardened steel may lose its uh, hardness if it is used on very high temperatures. And I'm not talking about so high temperatures where the brass will melt or something like that. So I think this is not really the reason. And one thing I'm missing here, and that's the glow-in-dark filament, uh, which is very often used in the CD printing community. And actually the steel has lower thermal conductivity compared to the brass, but it is true that we have to raise the printing temperature. I think I have to give it only one point. What is the purpose of heated bed in FDM CD printing? The purpose of a heated bed in FDM 3D printing is to improve adhesion between the printed object and the build plate. When the bed is heated, it helps to keep the first layer of the print warm which reduces the chance of warping or lifting. This is especially important when printing with materials that tend to warp, such as abs or nylon. Here are some of the benefits of using a heated bed in 3D printing. Improved adhesion. A heated bed can improve adhesion between the printed object and the build plate, which reduces the chance of warping or lifting. Better print quality. A heated bed can help to prevent issues such as layer separation or uneven cooling, which can result in a better overall print quality. Wider range of materials. Some materials, such as abs, require a heated bed in order to print successfully. By using a heated bed, you can expand the range of materials that you can use with your printer. Faster printing, by using a heated bed, you can increase the printing speed by reducing the cooling time between layers. This can result in faster print times and higher throughput. It is important to note that the optimal temperature for the heated bed will depend on the material being used. Different materials require different bed temperatures and it is important to consult the manufacturer's guidelines or experiment to find the optimal temperature for a particular print. Additionally, it is important to properly level the bed to ensure that the first layer is deposited evenly across the entire print surface. Okay, good answer. Only I'm not sure about faster printing. I mean, only maybe with the first layer only, but the rest of the print uh, should have the same printing speed. But two points. 
How does infill density affect the strength and weight of an FTM 3D print? Infill density refers to the amount of material that is used to fill the internal structure of a 3D print. It can have a significant impact on the strength and weight of the final print. Here are some of the ways in which infill density can affect the strength and weight of an FDM 3D print. Strength. Increasing the infill density of a print can increase its strength. This is because a higher infill density means that there is more material inside the print, which can help to distribute stress and prevent cracking or breaking. Weight. Increasing the infill density of a print can also increase its weight. This is because a higher infill density means that there is more material inside the print, which can add to the overall weight of the object. Print time. Increasing the infill density of a print can also increase the print time. This is because the printer will need to deposit more material in order to achieve the desired density, which can take longer. Material usage. Increasing the infill density of a print can also increase the amount of material that is used. This can result in higher material costs and may also impact the printer's overall lifespan. It is important to balance the infill density with the desired strength and weight of the final print. Higher infill densities can result in stronger prints, but they will also be heavier and take longer to print. Lower infill densities may result in lighter prints that are less strong, but they will also use less material and take less time to print. The optimal infill density will depend on the specific requirements of the print and the intended use of the object. Great answer, two points. What are two most popular slicer softwares? The two most popular slicer software programs for FDM 3D printing are Cura and Prusa Slicer. Cura is a free, open source software developed by Ultimaker. It has a user-friendly interface and supports a wide range of 3D printers and filaments. Cura includes advanced features such as customizable supports, multiple extruder support, and dynamic layer height, and it offers a range of print quality settings to optimize prints for speed, quality, or a balance of both. Prusa Slicer is another popular open source software developed by Prusa Research. It offers a range of advanced features, including customizable supports, automatic variable layer height, and customizable infill patterns. Prusa Slicer is particularly well suited for use with Prusa 3D printers, but it also supports a range of other 3D printers. Both Cura and Prusa Slicer are widely used by the 3D printing community and are frequently updated with new features and improvements. They are both powerful tools that can help users to optimize prints for their specific needs and achieve high-quality results. Yes, correct. These are two most popular slicers, and we even get uh, more information here. Two points. What are the advantages and disadvantages of using FDN 3D printing compared to other 3D printing technologies, such as SLA or SLS? Fused Deposition Modeling, FDM, is one of the most popular 3D printing technologies, but it has some advantages and disadvantages when compared to other 3D printing technologies. Here are three advantages and three disadvantages of FDM compared to other 3D printing technologies. Advantages. Cost effective. FDM 3D printers are generally more affordable than other 3D printing technologies, such as SLA or SLS. This makes them more accessible to hobbyists, students, and small businesses. Easy to use. FDM 3D printers are generally more user-friendly than other 3D printing technologies. They require less setup and maintenance and are easier to operate. Wide range of materials. FDM 3D printers can use a wide range of materials, including PLA, ABS, PETG, and nylon. This makes them suitable for a variety of applications, from prototyping to functional parts. Disadvantages. Limited resolution. FDM 3D printers have a limited resolution compared to other 3D printing technologies, such as SLA or SLS. This means that they cannot produce parts with the same level of detail and precision. Visible layer lines. FDM 3D prints often have visible layer lines, which can make them look less professional or polished. This can be mitigated by using finer nozzles or higher quality settings, but it is still a limitation of the technology. Mechanical strength. FDM 3D prints can have lower mechanical strength than parts produced with other 3D printing technologies, such as SLS or MJF. This is because the layer adhesion can be weaker, especially with lower infill densities or poor print settings. Correct answer and least. So, two points. What are free softwares related to 3D printing? Can you list 10? Yes, here are 10 free software related to 3D printing. Cura, a popular open source slicer software for FDM 3D printers. Prusa Slicer, another open source slicer software for FDM 3D printers, with advanced features like variable layer height. Blender, a 3D modeling software with powerful features for creating and editing 3D models, which can be used for 3D printing. Tinkercad, a simple, browser-based 3D modeling software that is great for beginners. 
OpenSCAD, a free, open-source software for creating 3D models using programming code. MeshLab, a software for processing and editing 3D mesh files, which can be useful for preparing models for 3D printing. FreeCAD, a free and open-source 3D CAD software that can be used for designing 3D models for 3D printing. OctoPrint, a free, open-source software for remotely controlling and monitoring FDM 3D printers. Repetier Host, a free, open-source software for controlling and slicing 3D prints, with support for multiple 3D printers. Slick3R, an open-source slicer software for FDM 3D printers, with advanced features like customizable support structures and variable layer height. Very nice answer, because in the list we have uh, slicers, uh, CAD softwares, and also communication softwares for controlling the printer. Two points. What is the strongest 3D printing filament? There is no single 3D printing filament that is universally considered the strongest, as the strength of a printed object depends on a variety of factors, including the design of the object, the printing settings, and the filament properties. However, some filaments are known for their strength and durability. Carbon fiber reinforced filaments. These filaments are infused with carbon fiber, which increases the strength and stiffness of the printed object. They are commonly used for high-stress applications, such as drone parts, automotive components, and industrial machinery. Nylon filaments. Nylon is a strong and flexible material that can withstand impact and wear. It is commonly used for functional parts, such as gears, hinges, and brackets. PETG filaments. PETG is a strong and durable material that is resistant to impact and chemicals. It is commonly used for outdoor applications, such as signs and enclosures. ABS filaments. ABS is a strong and tough material that can withstand heat and impact. It is commonly used for automotive and household parts, such as phone cases and toys. Polycarbonate filaments. Polycarbonate is a strong and rigid material that can withstand impact and high temperatures. It is commonly used for engineering and industrial applications, such as machine parts and electrical components. It's important to note that the strength of a printed object is not only determined by the filament material, but also by the printing settings, such as layer height, infill density, and print temperature. Okay, very correct answer, because it says that uh, no single printing filament is considered as the strongest. And I didn't even give him the specifications. Is it for industrial CD printing, you know, for printing peak or something like that, or just uh, simply um, under $1,000? Now, I wouldn't start this list with carbon fiber filaments, because it just makes the strongest that meet uh, carbon fibers, it's super strong filament. Uh, actually, see the printing filament, the carbon fibers are small particles and they must be small to avoid clogging of the nozzle. But in my experience, they don't really make the filament stronger. But they help a lot with uh, making the filament stable and nice and, uh, nicer printings. It helps a lot with, uh, I know, those uh, filaments which tends to work with ABS, uh, polycarbonate, nylon and similar. But anyway, two points. What is the best budget CD printer? There are several budget 3D printers available on the market, and the best one for you will depend on your specific needs and budget. Here are a few options to consider. Creality Ender 3. This is a popular and reliable FDM 3D printer that offers good print quality and a large build volume for its price range. It is a great option for beginners and hobbyists who are looking for an affordable 3D printer. Anycubic Photon. This is a budget resin-based 3D printer that offers high resolution and good print quality. It is a great option for those who want to print small, detailed objects, such as miniatures or jewelry. Monoprice Voxel. This is an affordable FDM 3D printer that offers a range of features, such as a heated bed, auto-leveling, and a color touchscreen. It is a great option for beginners who want a reliable and easy-to-use 3D printer. Flashforge Finder. This is another affordable FDM 3D printer that offers good print quality and a user-friendly interface. It is a great option for those who want a reliable and easy-to-use 3D printer for home or classroom use. Congro Creality Ender 3 Pro. This is an upgraded version of the popular Ender 3, with features such as a better power supply, upgraded extruder, and a removable magnetic bed. It is a great option for those who want a reliable and high-quality 3D printer on a budget. It's important to keep in mind that budget 3D printers may not offer the same level of features or print quality as more expensive models, but they can still be a great option for those who are just starting out or have limited budgets. Okay, I forget to specify that uh, I asked for FD and CD printer, so that's why any cubic photon is here. But I wouldn't start with Creality Ender 3. Maybe some newer version would be better to include it in this list. Uh, Monoprice Voxel, Flashword Finder, 
I didn't even heard about these printers. Uh, Comgro Creality Ender 3 Pro. Maybe some kind of rare brand of, of Creality. And for this list I can give only one point. And what is the best CD printer under $1000? There are many great FDM 3D printers available for under $1000, and the best one for you will depend on your specific needs and preferences. Here are a few options to consider. Prusa i3 MK3S Plus. This is a highly regarded FDM 3D printer that offers excellent print quality and a large build volume. It also includes features such as auto bed leveling and a filament runout sensor. It is priced at around $999 making it a great option for those who want a high-quality 3D printer without breaking the bank. Creality CR10 Volts 3. This is another popular FDM 3D printer that offers a large build volume and good print quality. It also includes features such as a filament runout sensor and a touchscreen interface. It is priced at around $400, making it a great option for those who want a good quality printer at a lower price point. Artillery Sidewinder X1. This is a fast and reliable FDM 3D printer that offers a large build volume and good print quality. It also includes features such as auto bed leveling and a touchscreen interface. It is priced at around $450, making it a great option for those who want a high quality printer at an affordable price. Anycubic Mega S. This is a well regarded FDM 3D printer that offers good print quality and a large build volume. It also includes features such as auto bed leveling and a touchscreen interface. It is priced at around $300, making it a great option for those who want a good quality printer at a lower price point. Flashforge Creator Pro. This is a reliable FDM 3D printer that offers good print quality and a large build volume. It also includes features such as dual extruders and a sturdy metal frame. It is priced at around $700, making it a great option for those who want a high quality printer at a mid-range price point. Ultimately, the best FDM 3D printer under $1,000 will depend on your specific needs and preferences, but these options are all highly regarded and offer good value for the price. Okay, this list is a little bit better than the previous one, but it's a little bit older. First of all, I cannot see the Bamboo Lab P1P in this list, but definitely it should be included here. And for example, uh, Artillery Sidewinder X1 is the older version, and they have much better X2 with great safety upgrades. So, only one point here. What is the build volume of Bamboo Lab P1P? I'm sorry, but as an AI language model, my knowledge is limited to text-based information and I do not have access to current data about all 3D printers on the market. However, I can tell you that the Bamboo Lab P1P is a compact and portable FDM 3D printer designed for on-the-go printing. Its build volume is relatively small compared to larger desktop 3D printers, but it is still capable of producing small to medium-sized prints with a build volume of approximately 120 by 120 by 120 millimeters. Definitely wrong answer because the volume is 256 millimeters cubic. Zero point. What can I do if the CD printed object don't stick to the PEI sheet? If your 3D printed object is not sticking to the pay sheet, there are a few things you can try. Adjust the bed temperature. The first thing you should try is adjusting the bed temperature. The bed temperature should be set according to the recommended temperature range for the filament you are using. If the temperature is too low, the filament may not stick to the pay sheet properly. Try increasing the bed temperature by a few degrees and see if that helps. Clean the pay sheet. Sometimes, the pay sheet may have residue or oils on its surface that can prevent the filament from sticking properly. Try cleaning the pay sheet with isopropyl alcohol or a similar cleaning solution. Use a lint-free cloth to wipe the pay sheet clean. Use adhesion aids. If adjusting the bed temperature and cleaning the pay sheet doesn't work, you can try using an adhesion aid like glue stick, hairspray, or a specialized 3D printing adhesive. Apply a thin layer of the adhesion aid to the pay sheet before printing. Adjust the bed leveling. Improper bed leveling can also cause adhesion issues. Make sure the bed is properly leveled before starting your print. You can use a piece of paper or a feeler gauge to check the distance between the nozzle and the bed at different points. By trying these solutions, you should be able to improve the adhesion of your 3D prints to the pay sheet. Okay, these are good suggestions. Maybe I will start with check the Z offsets, you know, the distance between the nozzle and the print surface. And only after that, the leveling of the bed. So this means that distance is equal on each side. But anyway, two points here. And now a very sensitive question. Which printer is better, Bamboo Lab P1P or Prusa MK3S? Both the Bamboo Lab P1P and the Prusa MK3S are good 3D printers, but they have different features and capabilities. The Bamboo Lab P1P is a compact and portable 3D printer that is designed for on-the-go printing. 
It has a large build volume of 256 by 256 by 256 millimeters, making it a versatile option for printing a range of objects. It also features a Bowden extruder, which can help with printing speed and accuracy, as well as a removable magnetic build plate with pay surface for easy print removal. On the other hand, the Prusa MK3S is a popular desktop 3D printer with a slightly smaller build volume of 250 by 210 by 210 mm. It features a direct drive extruder, which can be more precise and better suited for printing with flexible filaments. It also has a variety of advanced features such as automatic bed leveling, filament runout detection, and a multi-material upgrade option. Ultimately, the choice between the Bambalab P1P and the Prusa MK3S depends on your specific needs and preferences. If you need a portable 3D printer with a large build volume, the Bambalab P1P may be the better choice. If you want a more advanced desktop 3D printer with advanced features and options for future upgrades, the Prusa MK3S may be a better option. Intersigna it knows correctly the Bamboo Lab uh, printing volume. I'm not quite sure about the Prusa volume, but something like this, yes. But uh, I notice few errors here. Uh, the P1P is not Bowden extruder because it is also a direct drive. Okay, it has that river Bowden which actually pulls the filament through that. And uh, at the end it suggests the P1P over Prusa because it's portable and larger build volume. Well, I'm not sure is it portable. I mean, both are very similar here. Uh, interesting that it doesn't mention the speed here, which is the biggest difference between these two printers. Oh yes, and of course the P1P is basically ready out of the box. And there is no need for the settings. So this is highly recommended even for the beginners. Uh, so only one point here. How much filament is needed to see the print a Benchy? The amount of filament required to 3D print a Benchy will depend on the specific settings and parameters used for the print, as well as the size of the Benchy model. However, as a general estimate, it's common to use around 20 to 30 grams of filament to print a standard-sized Benchy with a layer height of 0.2 mm and a 20% infill. This can vary depending on the type of filament being used and the specific settings of the printer. It's always a good idea to check the estimated filament usage in your slicer software before starting a print to ensure that you have enough filament on hand for the entire print job. At this moment I'm not even sure how much I will check in the slicer, but it looks like a correct answer, so probably two points. And the last question, with what type of filament I need a filament dryer? Most types of filaments can benefit from being dried before use, especially if they have been exposed to moisture. However, some types of filament are more susceptible to moisture absorption than others and may require a filament dryer to achieve optimal print quality. Filaments that are known to be particularly sensitive to moisture include nylon, PVA, PETG, and some types of TPU. These filaments can absorb moisture from the air over time, which can lead to issues such as stringing, poor adhesion, and reduced mechanical properties. If you are experiencing issues with these types of filaments, or if you live in a humid environment, a filament dryer can help to remove moisture and restore the filament to its optimal printing condition. However, it's important to follow the manufacturer's guidelines and recommendations for drying your specific type of filament, as different filaments may require different drying temperatures and durations. This is really great answer, and exactly in this order, nylon, PVA, PETG, TPU, something like that. And also it mentioned that it depends where do you live. If you live in a humid environment, then definitely uh, you have to use this kind of filament dryers. Two points. Okay, this was interesting. Only with one question, it gets zero points. This was the P1P build volume. But interesting with the next question, where uh, this printer was again related, you know, compared with the Prusa, it gave me the correct values. So that's not bad for the half year old, let's call it person. <laughs> anyway, the future is very interesting and it will be just better. So you can try it yourself. I hope you find this video interesting, not too long. Thank you for watching and happy printing and chatting.